What the hell? So last week we reported that Sir David Attenborough was to take the people's seat at the UN climate talks in Poland, and earlier this week he gave his speech to the UN leaders on this matter. I would strongly recommend watching this speech by yourself, in which he urged them to take action, saying that the people have spoken, and that climate change is what they want. Crucially, he said that climate change was humanity's greatest threat in thousands of years. Some great news for prehistoric whale lovers this week, as a new genus and species has been named that provides some much needy clarity over how the incredible baleen structures first evolved in Cretaceans. Based on fossils discovered in 33 million year old Oligocene rocks from Oregon, this whale has been named Maya Baleena Nespitae. The organism has been placed as a very basal mister seat, and importantly, it lacks both teeth and baleen plates. This shows that tooth loss occurred in mist deceits before baleen evolved, solving the mystery of just how the transition from teeth to baleen actually happened. Lacking any teeth in the mouth, Maya baleena most likely suctioned fed, eventually resulting on the evolution of baleen later on that could be used to filter feed instead. A new study published this week has examined a locality in New South Wales, finding it to contain a relatively diverse array of ornithopod dinosaurs. Amongst the various animals identified from the remains preserved here is a new genus and species which has been named Weewarisaurus pobeni. The study confirms that in these areas of Australia during the Cretaceous period there was an abundance of small ornithopods, as previous papers had suggested. A very interesting paper has also been published this week in the journal Nature, Ecology and Evolution, which has looked at the genetics of giant Galapagos tortoises. The genomes of the famous Lonesome George, as well as another species of tortoise, were examined by researchers for the first time. It was found that the key to the long life these creatures lead could have a lot to do with certain gene variants that affect DNA repair, immune responses and cancer suppression, variants that are not found in organisms that live for shorter amounts of time. So, even after he died, Lonesome George is still providing scientists with insight into the natural world, and even into the secrets of long life. That's it for this week's episode of 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do so if you want to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you have or will do, we'll see you on Sunday.